it's that time of year where we are starting our seeds. And the question becomes, why would you use a seed starting mix over a potting soil mix? What is the difference? Does it matter? And is there a seed starting mix out there that is better than another? And I know this is the brand no one likes, so we're actually gonna discuss this evil brand as well in this video. So let's get into it. Number one is probably the lowest on the totem pole reasons for why to do this. Obviously a heavier soil can result in some levels of root rot or just bacterial and fungal growth, which results in dampening. Dampening is just a generic term that encompasses a variety of different reasons in which seedlings don't germinate or they don't perform well as seedlings. This can be caused from a potting soil that contains vermicast, compost, manures, mineral soils, rock dust, fertilizers, all these things contribute to more microporosity and ultimately a heavier potting soil. So that would be reason number one for choosing a seed starting mix over a potting soil. Number two is actually the aeration or the porosity or macro porosity in that soil system. So in our potting soil mixes, we classically see a lot of perlite and the more professional the mix is, the better perlite we tend to see. So for example, a professional mix like what I use, Sunshine Mix number four, has a very large perlite granular in it. And when I was talking to a media scientist from SunGrow, they had mentioned that SunGrow Mix number four is a professional mix. And that is why we don't tend to see gnats or fungus or bacterial issues. And most definitely uh, root rot is just sim simply just not an issue when we're utilizing these professional mixes. Now, what I will say is that this perlite isn't a bad thing when we have plants that have a developed root structure. However, when we're speaking about seedlings, we have root structures that are not yet fully developed and are not very tough. And that can result in ear pruning and damage or open spaces in which can introduce bacteria fungi, which again results in dampening off. We want to avoid the large perlite that potting soil mixes have and seed starting mixes generally are absent of. Roots are different. Roots aren't tubular in the same sense that we, we see with just other plant biomass. It's actually a layering of cells. And this layering of cells is very easily damaged when it's new. The older the root becomes, the thicker the, the cell mass becomes and it ultimately protects the plant over time, which is why we can put abrasives like pumice or perlite or, um, soil, whatever the case is, into that mix to allow that plant to germinate. Now, that would be the reason why we want it with seedlings because we don't have as many layers. So it's not as thick, it's not as built up, it's not as hardy, which can result in, again, open sores and air pruning. Number three is actually nutrients. So remember how we just spoke about roots and how they aren't very tough and they don't have a ton of layers? Well, it turns out that that lack of layers or that lack of durability also can affect the plant performance when exposed to nutrients. Now nutrients can come in many different shapes and sizes. It can come in synthetic, granular, liquid, you name it. It can come in organic. So again, liquid or compost or vermicast or whatever the case is. All of these things can burn these very juvenile poor roots and this burning ultimately will affect that plant's growth long term so we don't want to introduce any sort of nutrient into that seed the seed itself is engineered in a way that will allow the plant to germinate and survive and thrive without any additional inputs for a pretty significant period of time. It wouldn't be until you actually bump the plant up that you would want to begin to worry about this being a problem. Now, what I will say in the event that you were to use a compost, for example, you could end up with um, some germination issues. And that is because composts are plant materials and plant materials can inhibit plant growth. And 
this is all comes from allopathic plants or allopathic properties of plants. And I've spoken about this in length. I'll put a little bit of a, a word here about what that means. But ultimately speaking, we want to try to avoid this as much as possible. And that means leaving compost out of the mix until it is time to add it. And if you want to be even more careful, you may want to do a test on that compost and a germination test or a viability test, whatever you want to call it. There's a number of different fancy names for it can help you determine if your compost is safe to use with seedlings. So I done a video on what this test would look like. You'll need peas and you'll need like a wheat or a grass of some sort. You want a monocot and you want a dicot, 10 seeds of each. You want to see if these germinate. It will give you a good indication of whether or not there are pesticides or chemicals or anything in that soil system or compost system that may affect your plants as both adults and as seeds. The last one is sterility. So you guys know I do not advocate for putting soil in the oven. I do not advocate for putting it in the microwave. I at most will tell you to put boiling water on a, a mix to rehydrate it. That would be the extent of sterility I would go to. What we mean by when we see a seeds when we say a seed starting mix is sterile is we're referencing simply that it doesn't have compost or vermicast or anything in it that could introduce uh, bacterial fungal disease issues that we would have seen in the plant debris that made up that compost or vermicast manure, whatever the case is. When we're, where we get the sterility from is actually from it being made from pure peat or from pure coconut coir. These I've spoken about before and the pH of peat and coconut coir is very low, which in and of itself is just naturally sterile. And the absence of plant debris or uh, organic inputs helps with that sterility as well. Now, if you have issues with gnats or thrips or any sort of kind of soil borne egg laid bug, you probably are using a potting soil mix because that is common for that to have it in there. Particularly the brand, the evil brand miracle Grow, they almost always add compost to particularly their non-professional mix, which is the yellow bag, the all purpose that you see everywhere. The seed starting mix, however, is a little bit different. It doesn't have that uh, in the capacity in which you can end up with gnats or it's, it's not supposed to anyways. There is some nutrients in here, but again, if you look at the package of this seed starting mix, it is incredibly low, very low at that, fat, at that matter. 0 0.03 is basically negligible. So this would be a seed starting mix you may want to go with. Again, it's not going to have much perlite in it. If you want to learn more about seed starting and the entire process start to finish, analyzing issues, trying to figure this all out for yourself, please watch the video that I'll have coming out later next week by hitting that subscribe button, turning on the notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you use for your seed starting mix and why. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.